Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, and this one what I'm going to do is show you how to make the camera shake. But I, uh, I actually I did a tutorial on this a long time ago, and I really learned a lot in the editor, and I learned how to do this with way less tiles. So let me show you how to do it real quick. It's pretty cool. All right, so first what you want to do is go to Triggers and Events, and go to Data Sources, and grab a Curve Data Source. All right, so we're going to be using two of these. I'm going to set these up. First one is going to be negative 30 to 0. We're going to let this last 150 ticks. And we're going to turn it off. All right, the second one is going to be 30 to 0. And this is going to be 150 ticks. And we're going to turn it off. All right. Now, second, what we need is a random data source. So that's under Triggers and Events, Data Sources, Random Data Source. All right, now, need two of these. We're going to set these up. We're going to use the minimum number. It's going to be the negative number. So uh, select Pick Value Object. We select that curved data source. On Maximum Pick Value Object, we select the larger positive number curve data source. Alright, so we can lift these up a little bit. Alright, so next what we need is uh, two input operators. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, one more thing that we need to do is we need to reseed one of these random data sources. Click on reseed until they're not picking the same number. You don't want them picking the same numbers. So, you know, you just hit it once, it'll do it, but I usually go through a few times just to make sure it's different. All right, now what we need is an operator, a two input operator. And what these are going to do, we need two of these. What these are going to do is give us a fraction of the random number. Random number is three and five. These are meters in movement. So it's going to be way too much movement. So we want to take a, a fraction of that. So what we're going to do is multiply. So we pick value object, the random data source. Multiply that times 0.1. That's going to give us one tenth of the value. Do the same thing with this. Multiply. Pick the value object to be this random data source, and we're going to need one tenth of that value. So you see that goes from 3 to 0.3, and this goes from minus 15 to minus 1.5. So that's what we need to. Uh, to make this less drastic of a movement. Okay, so now what we're going to need is an object position event. Now this is going to be what moves the camera. Now our settings are going to be the X position is going to be this movement and the Y position is going to be this movement. We don't do Z, we don't need rotation. The value target, event target is going to be the camera. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to power everything so we need an interval trigger. The interval trigger will send impulses to the object position event which will set the camera to the positions in the uh, two input operators. So this inter interval is going to be one. The event filter goes to the object position event. All right, Now we need to turn these off. So we need to turn off the interval trigger and we need to turn off the object position event by clicking enabled. All right, we need to make sure our curved data sources are turned off. Okay. All right, so now when we have the explosion, we're going to want to turn this on. So we need to use a state event to do that. So we grab a state event from events. Okay, and this is going to be an on event. And the event targets are going to be the interval trigger, the object position event and the two curved data sources. Now that's going to turn them on and they're going to stay on. And These are going to go from negative 30 to 0 over 150 ticks. Now after that it's just going to stay 0 but it's not going to stop pushing trying to move this this camera. So we want to turn that back off when we're done with it. So we're going to grab an impulse delay which is under filters. We have an impulse delay filter and we're going to set it to 150 because our curved data sources were set to 150. So we set this to 150. 
We take our on event and copy it, bring it up, and make it an off event. Go from the on event to the delayed impulse for 150 ticks, and then go to the off event. Now to trigger this, we're going to want to trigger it with the explosion. So after these two explosions, after this break event, we're going to take the event filter and we're going to move to the on event to turn on shaking the camera. All right, so now this should work fine. Let's test it out. Huh. Okay, so that didn't work at all. Okay, we need to set our interval to 1 on the random data sources because it needs to be picking numbers every tick. And then we just had it on 60, so it only picked one number. So let's try it again. Okay, you see it shakes the camera and then it stops. It goes down to 0, so what it's doing is it's, it's picking a number between negative 30 and 0 and 30 and 0 and moving to that position or a fraction of that position and it slowly moves down to zero to where it stops moving completely so it starts with heavy movement and gradually fades down to no movement now a lot of times you're probably going to want to do this shaking with the game camera instead of moving to a separate camera but you can't you can't set this object position of this to just to just shake this camera it won't work so now I'm going to show you how to set this camera to be aligned with that camera and then it will move. So we're not going to use this anymore. So clear that out. Alright, so what we are going to need to do, we're going to need to get the position of the blue camera first. So we're going to go to data sources, we're going to grab a vector object info. Alright, so now it's going to be the info on this blue camera. So we select the camera. And that gives us the position. Now copy this tile, set it to angle, and that gives us the angle of the camera. Now what we're going to need to do is set this camera to that angle. So we need to grab another object position event. And we need to grab another interval trigger. Okay, same thing, we're going to set this interval trigger to one tick and go to the object position event. Now this object position event we're going to set, turn off local because this is a global number, X set to there, Y set to there, and Z set to the position vector. Now we go to rotation, we turn off local, turn on set rotation, and set the yaw to angle, the pitch to angle, and the bank to angle. Okay, so now we take the event target of the object position event and set it to the camera. So now when we hit play, it should set that camera to exactly the same position as the blue camera. Alright, so that's what we want. Now when we want to shake that camera, we have to shake it from this position. We can't just shake it because we're in a global position. We have to shake it from the global position. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to this position. So first what we need to do is we need to extract the X and Y positions from this vector. So how we're going to do that is we're going to use a data source and we're going to use get vector. Now what this does is it grabs one of these positions. These positions are in numbered indexes which 68 is in a 0 position, 101 is in a 1 position, and 716 is in a 2 position. So what we need to do is we need to connect to this vector and you see it automatically sets the index to zero and it selects 6850 which is the X position. I'm going to copy this and get the Y position. So we set the index to one and that gives us the second number in the vector which is the Y position. Alright so now what we need to do is we need to add a number to this and we don't want the number to always be adding, we don't want the number to always be uh, you know adding a position because we want it to stay at the position unless it's shaking the only time it's shaking is the only time we want to be adding a number to it so we're going to use a variable so we can change that number constantly okay so now we need two variables 
this variable here, oops, this variable here is going to be the x, and this is going to be the y. Now, what we want to do is we want to add to this position. So we want to add these two together. So we need a two input operator. So we go to operations and grab a two input operator. And actually, we should copy these. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to add to the blue camera position, we want to add this variable. And now, with same thing with this one, we want to add the Y position, we use the pick value object and we select the ve get vector and then we want to add the variable to that. Okay, and this is going to be the answer. This is the answer of adding those two together. This is what the, the final answer is. So that's how these work is they're constantly doing that. They're always updating. You don't have to update them or anything. But you do have to, we're going to have to set the value of this to these values when we want the camera to shake. So what we're going to use is a set value event. So we need to go back to events. We need to go to set value event. We're going to need two of these, one for each position. So we set value here and set value here. Now, this first value is going to be this first position. And the event target is going to be this variable. You remember up here, we got position X and position Y, and here we have position X and position Y. So we just need to add those two together. Okay, so this value here is going to be the position Y. Going to add that, and the value target is going to be this variable here. So what it's actually going to do is add this number, or set this variable number to that number, which is this number, which is what we used the first time when we shook the camera. Okay, so now what we need to do so you need to link these two together. You're going to have to hit these with an interval, an impulse, sorry. You've got to hit it with an impulse for it to work. For actually set the value, it has to be hit with an impulse. We want to constantly hit it with an impulse, but we only want to do it when we need it. So we're going to turn off this interval trigger, and we're going to set it to go to that set value event, and then it, it in turn will go to this set value event. This will be every tick. It will set those values, which will add to these values. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this positions and we're going to take the X position we're going to switch it to this operand because we're adding those two together. We're going to switch the Y position to this operand also, or this other operand. So it's adding those two positions together. Now these positions are going to need to be changed once you start shaking the camera. So what we're going to want to do is take this on event, we're going to want to set it, you need to unselect these because these are not doing anything any longer and set it to this interval trigger which will turn on and start setting those event those values all right now we need to set the off event okay so what we need to do I think what we need to do is get the camera to be set to the we want to switch to the camera when the explosion happens so we're going to use this camera event here. This camera event switches to the yellow camera and I had it on this this area trigger to switch to the camera when we were riding by but we're going to only switch to the camera when you need it when the explosion happens. So we're going to use this camera event right after this break event. So we're going to go there with the impulse. We're going to take the impulse from the camera and we're going to go to the on event here which turns on these curved data sources and also turns on this impulse trigger to set these values to the values that are calculated from these curved data sources. We no longer need this, so I moved it out of the way of the drive line. Alright, so now we're going to want to turn this off and go back to this blue camera when we're done. So we need another camera event. So let's grab a camera event, copy it over, select the camera, we're going to set the, the game camera. And we're going to unselect that event filter for now. Just move this over here. Okay, so now, after that's turned off, we're going to want to switch back to the blue camera. But as this is moving, it's going to not end up at the blue camera. So we want to go back and set these values over here on these variables back to zero. So we hit square to reset to default. And the event values are going to be these two variables. 
And then from this value, we're going to go to the camera event because we want to switch back to the camera when we're done. And I'm going to move this over here. So we turn on the shaking. We wait till the shaking's done. We turn the shaking off. We reset those values back to zero because it would, would be offset whatever it was shaking. It should be back to zero, but it may not. So we'll set it back to zero. Then we switch to the blue camera and we're done with the explosion effect. Okay, now I'm going to slow this down a little bit because I want it to kind of still be shaking as it switches back. So I'm going to take it down to 100 instead of 150 just to make sure that uh, resets in a nice timely manner. Okay, so here we go. And it shakes. And it doesn't stop shaking. Alright, so something is wrong. Okay, we need to turn off that interval trigger. Make sure this camera's also you want to make sure this camera's enabled is turned off. Its range is small, range is just default, but make sure that camera's turned off as far as enabled. Okay, there we go. Alright, so that was the problem, it, was it didn't turn the animation back off, so we had to turn it back off. So, okay, so that's that's it. If you're going slow in a track. It's going to look pretty cool. So it explodes, moves around, and then switches back to the blue camera. Alright, so let me show you what this looks like from the outside. Just, okay, and what I did before, I'm sorry, what I did before, I uh, turned off that interval trigger, event target, I turned off this interval trigger over here that was setting those values to stop setting the values because we want to reset those values and we have to stop setting that value to these and to reset it to zero because this will continually set it to another value. Okay, so that's what I did to fix it. All right, so now let me show you this. Let me grab a area effector. Okay, what this does is it's like a wind. So we're gonna use it to just blow the rider into the, so now you can see the camera following, then you see the camera shaking and then it goes back to where it was. One more time. Shakes the camera and then goes back to where it was. Okay, so that's how you do it. Uh, I hope that you, uh, I hope that you got it down tried to go fairly slow and I've had some comments that I go too fast with stuff so hopefully you can uh, get this down and it will uh, help with your tracks so thanks for watching and have a good time